Okay, for this problem, we see that everything on the left-hand side is already written in terms of sines and cosines, except for this one. So one thing we could apply, we could apply the first technique and change this into, by using our identity right here, cosine divided by sine. But if I just do that only, it's not going to be enough for me to, to really simplify this down any further. So I want to apply another technique. So a lot of times you may have to apply more than one t technique here. In this case, we have a factoring step that we can do on top here because we notice there's a cosine and a cosine there. So that's another technique I can apply uh, right away is factoring out a cosine. So I'm going to do that on top. I'm going to factor out the cosine x. So cosine x and I get 1 minus 2 sine x. On the bottom, I can't do any factoring. Now the reason why I can't do any factoring on the bottom is because I don't have something that I can take out of all of them. And I can't really do any kind of factoring by grouping here because I've, because the, I don't have two things that really match. Now I could factor the, the middle two terms, but that's not going to be, really be enough for me to cancel anything out on top. I've got to have it all in a factor form in order for me to cancel something out from top and bottom. So I can't do anything with the bottom one. And then this one we mentioned earlier, we can uh, make this cosine x over sine x because that's the identity that came right from here. Now that I have this point, I need to see what else I can do for my techniques. So here's my techniques again. Change everything to sines and cosines, done, we did it. Use factoring, we did. Three, get common denominators if there's fractions. Well, normally you, if you have two fractions together, then you would do common denominators to combine those both together. We don't have that in this case, we only have one fraction. Then step four, multiply both sides by a conjugate. Well, that's really only when you have two terms on the bottom like that, and we have four terms, so we can't really multiply by a conjugate either. So we've already gone through and exhausted all of our techniques for showing that one side equals the other. So once we've exhausted all those, when you get to a roadblock, this is the time when you want to start looking to see if we have some identities from this list that we can put in to make our life easier. So again, it may be difficult to recognize the identity at first, but the more you practice with it, the identities will become more familiar and you'll be able to see one of those and recognize it quicker. Now the, the problem here is I've got two different trig functions going on. I've got, I've got sines here and I have cosine. It would be better if I could make them all into sines because then it might allow me to do some more factoring later. So I'm going to look at my identities and see is there a way that I can get rid of the cosine squared and turn it into a sine squared. When I look through my identities, I find this one right here. This one says that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. That's the identity that I want to use right in here. So what, I'm, what I'll do is I'm going to replace the cosine squared with the identity 1 minus sine squared. That's what I'll do next here. So on top, I can't do any more. I've already factored that down as much as I can, so the top is going to be done. The cosine squared, I'm going to put 1 minus sine squared in there in place of the cosine squared. I made a substitution on that one. Everything else is going to be written the same, and I still have cosine x over sine x over here on the right-hand side. So now that I have all that complete, I'm, now that I've uh, turned it all into sines, I'm going to see now if I can do some more simplifying. And it turns out you can. The 1 here is going to cancel out with the minus 1 over there, so that takes care of that. And then I have some like terms that I can combine together here as well. So I'll have the top parts the same still. And then on the bottom, I have a sine x that I, I, I can't combine that together with anymore. That's by itself. But these two, I can combine that together. I have a minus 1 and a minus 1 there. That will give me a minus 2 sine squared x. And I have cosine x over sine x over here. Okay, now what I want to do is look, see if I can do another factoring step. And it turns out I can. There's a common factor of sine on there that I can pull out. So I get cosine x, 1 minus 2 sine x on top. On the bottom, I'm going to pull out a sine x. And I get 1 minus 2 sine x. I get exactly the same thing that I have on the top. So what happens here, the way I can get both sides equal, is if I just cancel that part out there, then all of a sudden I will have both sides equal. So then cosine x over sine x equals cosine x over sine x. I've proven now that both sides are equal. And again, my answer is my process showing from one side all the way down. I kept the cotangent and changed it into cosine over sine. I kept it all the way down to the bottom. We've, once you cancel that out, you can just show that both uh, sides equal to each other. Now, if you want to put cosine x over sine x equals cosine x over sine x, you can, or 
your final step could actually be this one. You could put cotangent x equals cotangent x. It doesn't really matter what exactly it is on both sides of the equation. The most, uh, most important thing is that you've shown that both sides are equal. So as long as you have both sides are equal and you show logically how you got to that point, that's all that really matters. In fact, some of these problems actually have more than one way of doing it. So you might find a different way of doing it besides what I did here. As long as that's mathematically correct and you got both sides equal, then that's fine. You can do it whatever method will work best for you.